And I could tell right away we was going to have a joyous occasion at class that day. Because little Junior's attitude was he wasn't a bit more caring about learning how to pick that guitar than he was picking his nose. He wasn't interested. In it. That didn't mean a thing to him. And I see a lot of people and even folks that come to church and their attitude is not a bit more turned toward God or the things of God than anything in this world. There's some folks I ain't even sure why they come. I, honest, I don't know why some folks do what they do. But your attitude is one of the things that there'll be a great work of repentance in the attitude and in the heart of a man. The word attitude means the state of mind. It means your feelings or your disposition about something. And real scriptural repentance is a supernatural changing of your heart and mind. Real Bible repentance causes you to change your mind toward God. You'll change your mind about sin, about yourself, and about the Savior. Let me ask you a question this morning. What is your attitude toward sin? What's your attitude toward the Savior? What's your attitude towards yourself? That's where most of us focus our attention on ourselves, what we want. Amen. The night I got saved, the night I really, truly got born of the Spirit of God, that night my attitude got changed. That night I got so sick of sin. I had got so sick of myself. And I so longed to commit myself to the Savior I so longed to absolutely desperately in my heart, I wanted to submit myself to the Lordship of Christ. Hey, listen, I want to give up every bit of claim and every bit of control this morning. Do you know why God allows a lot of people's lives to spin recklessly out of control? To show you just exactly how weak you are. When I was 12 years old, a little 12-year-old boy across town in Wilkesboro, Hillcrest Baptist Church, I made a false profession. I did like a lot of 12-year-old kids do. I'd sat under the preaching and I was under conviction. The night I made my first false profession, I was keenly aware of my sin. I was under conviction. I was keenly aware of a need for a Savior. But I was not brought to the place of repentance where I was willing to abandon myself to get him. See, I wanted a Savior. I want to be forgiven of my sin. I just didn't want to leave my sin. You know why I didn't want to do that, Brother James? That hadn't ever been worked in my heart. That's a work of God. God's got to work in a man where he's willing to abandon that stuff. The unregenerate man. I'll give you some things real quick. We're going to go to the house. About why God must work repentance in a man's heart. Number one, the unregenerate man is comfortable in sin. Did you know today if you were not comfortable in sin, you'd do something about it? But the fact that you openly refuse to do something about sin, you refuse to do something about the change that needs to be made in your life, is a testimony to the fact you're comfortable right where you're at. There's things in this world that aggravate me and occasionally I have to do something about them. Some of y'all are that way. I remember my precious daddy when he was still alive. He was probably about 80 years old. My daddy was absolutely, totally, completely blind. He was so crippled up that he couldn't hardly get from the bed to the couch. But my daddy got this thing on his mind that there was this oil filter in the basement between two oil barrels and that thing was dripping and it got to bothering him. And it aggravated him and aggravated him and he got some tools and he got some things together and told me to go fix that and I went and worked on that and I ain't a plumber. But I remember that bothered my daddy to the point one day I came in the house and the basement door was open. Miss Ann, I went downstairs and there stood my mama in the floor holding some tools and my daddy broke down, crippled, totally blind, standing on a kitchen chair or working on that pipe. You know why he went to all that trouble to do that? It bothered him. I've come to the conclusion this morning that a lot of folks are just not bothered by sin because you don't never do anything about it. If it really bothered you, you'd do something about it. Amen. 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 You're comfortable with it. Sin is as much a part of the human nature as wallowing in the mud is the part of the nature of a hog. You ever thought about how disgusting that is? An old hog would stand out there. I mean them old pink, ugly, wicked looking things. 
God done cursed them in the Old Testament. Brother Wesley, they stand there and they defecate and they urinate and they make the awfulest, muddiest mess and the first thing you know, they'll flop down and roll in it, root their head up in it and grin. How disgusting that is. There ain't a smell in the world like pig mud. But pigs are comfortable in it. Part of their nature. You ever thought about an old Jersey cow going out and grazing in the pasture for three or four hours and then she goes down, finds a shade tree and lays down. And she begins to regurgitate and throw that back up from one stomach to another stomach and into her mouth and begins to chew that again and chew it up and mm, 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 enjoy it and swallow it again. Oh, that's disgusting. But see, that's the nature of a cow. Sin this morning is part of the nature of humanity. And that that's so disgusting to a holy God we can be comfortable with. Hey, you don't have to train yourself. You don't have to practice. Little children, even in their innocence, here, are comfortable with sin. It's part of your nature. You know why people talk the way they talk this morning? They're comfortable with it. You know why people watch the filth they watch on television this morning? They're comfortable with it. You know why people listen to the filth they listen to on the radio? They're comfortable with it. You know why people go the places they go? They're comfortable with it. I thank God when I got born of the Spirit of God, there were some things that automatically I was uncomfortable with. I mean, I used to listen to Eloise in the morning, WTQR, just like all my other redneck buddies did. And when I got born of the Spirit of God, all of a sudden, there was something about laying here with Susie and Sally's on my mind. didn't appeal to me anymore. It made me uncomfortable to hear folks talk about drinking and carousing and cussing. It made me uncomfortable to hear folks talk about running around on their wives and committing adultery. If that don't bother you this morning, you're comfortable with it because that's part of your nature. But see, when you get born of the Spirit of God, God gives you a new nature. And all of a sudden, that that you used to love and that that you used to wallow in will become offensive to you and hurt your feelings and you don't want to be around it anymore. Brother Junior, we used to make our living in them juke joints and nightclubs and honky-tonks. And I, Listen, I've got liberty in Christ today. I go anywhere in the world and sit down and eat and still be right with God. But I'm going to tell you what, there's some places that I don't like to go because of the atmosphere in them, because that's what God saved me out of. I'm a, I don't mean to apologize this morning, but it still says the Sagebrook Steakhouse and Saloon. There's some things and some places I'm not comfortable with anymore. And that's not, I'm not being a Pharisee this morning. I know I have liberty to go places. I know I have liberty to do things. But there are some things that I'm not comfortable with anymore. When God reveals what sin does to mankind, it begins to make him uncomfortable with sin. Did you know this morning that every heartache that you've ever had is a direct result of original sin. Did you know this more than every broken home, every broken marriage is a direct result of original sin? I had a preacher friend that was in a meeting and a little nine-year-old boy came to the altar and wept like a baby and the pastor got up and prayed with that little boy and came back to his seat my preacher friend asked the pastor later, what, what's wrong with this little boy? Is he worried about his soul? Is it his salvation that he's dealing with? And my preacher friend said, that pastor said, no, brother, nothing like that. He said, tomorrow morning, that little nine-year-old boy is going to have to go over here to the courthouse and stand before a judge and tell that judge whether he wants to live with mama or he wants to live with daddy. There ain't a nine-year-old child in this world that ought to have to go through that. Amen. But it's the direct result of S-I-N, sin. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about just the actions of mom and daddy. I'm talking about original sin right. in the nature of man, woman, boy, or girl that causes men to lust. Causes men and women to commit adultery. Causes men and women to want to look for greener pastures and jump the fence. 